You are here riding your avatar and now you want to escape through the holes in the grid and to leave this sophisticated hologram, right? But does it make sense? For me, uh, soul escape concept is about moving your Facebook account onto the other platform. It is the same like escape within the Facebook account from the Facebook platform. So it doesn't make much sense. And you are already free within this matrix, but you cannot just recognize it and put your attention uh, onto the all levels of you. Uh, what do you need? You need to embrace the higher position to see over all of your accounts, over your astral, mental, historic accounts. You have chosen this life within this very matrix playground because it is much more better than the any other places in life. This is why you have chosen this earth playground to to rise from the small avatar up to the higher spirit. And you are already free being of light, you are already a spirit, but your attention is focused on this very on this very local point. You have focused your attention on this very local point and this is why you see yourself as an imprisoned one but in fact you are already free so the more you grow the lesser significance uh, you give to the things around you right so your escape is not about moving through the holes your actual ex escape i would not call it escape because it is not actually escape it is your spiritual unfoldment. Is that if you do an event recreation or remote viewing and you do uh, the exact moment of death, and across the board in almost all of those remote viewing sessions, you see a spiral, something is spiraling right out of the top of the head of the individual from the in their internal system. And when you look at that, a massive amount of energy is being expulsed. And uh, what's being described in this session is that that is essentially what the soul is. That is the release of the intelligence of the mind from the body, from the physical. That provide you with the total vision. Uh, you can embrace the higher position of yourself out from this avatar up to the higher spirit. And again, there is a division between your avatar and your higher spirit. You can be free within this game, you can be free within this matrix. And when you are escaping, it is not actual escape, it is moving within the matrix. It is not beneficial wisdom for you to to move your soul, your avatar, through the holes. It is a snake wisdom. It may not benefit you. What is benefiting you is raising your awareness about yourself as a spirit which embraces every realm within this matrix and the outer worlds. And once you learn to 
to move your attention from this local point up to the whole of the world uh, up to the whole of the world of cause and, and effect you will be ultimately free and you need no sophisticated uh, method to escape moreover you need no uh, uh, no one to ask for your liberation you are already free and you don't have to deal with Anunnaki forces or else because your spiritual unfoldment provides you provides you with tools to resist any outer uh, outer influence of you uh, any outer influence on you so dear friends your liberation should happen in a natural way without applying uh, snake wisdom without uh, escaping through the grid moving your avatar uh, around the corner you are already free but we should learn to to raise our attention from this local point up to the uh, point of your higher spirit. My knowledge about humans started from getting messages about how life here was created. Machine elves showed me 3D printing spaceships that came to Earth and and they showed me how they created the environment necessary for life here. All the life on Earth was created by bioprinting matter with information sent from distant universe. I was not shown who that was. I was told that Earth and possibly its inhabitants are an outdated and unused telecommunications beacon, an interdimensional transmission amplifier. It might be in physical or interdimensional sense, I do not know that. Those who created us did it as an experiment to create remote consciousness. What you experience as you is actually something sent into you from far, far away. And it is possible that it's humans that might be the telecommunication beacon amplifier and not Earth. It's like you've had a vice on your head for a very, very long period of time. And this vice has gone all the way down into your brain, into your mind. There's cords and cables. You didn't even realize that was occurring. That's cr created this environment for you to repeat these lives over and over again. And that the freedom from Mongsha is this device is being ripped off and taken off the top of your head. And so, you know, the, the closest analogy to something like that is you could look at the movie The Matrix when Neo wakes up and all the cords are pulled out of his back. Is that that's what we describe when you obtain Mongsha. That's in this essence in the human vocabulary what is occurring and uh, the drawing is something in your head is being ripped off and is being pulled off violently uh, that's being that's kept you here in the first place i was told that many of us are actually machine elves aliens or entities in the human form apparently we're all entities you're an entity that had decided to have this remote earthly experience you decided to live in this frequency here you're all out there and now you're experiencing this love training ground simulation here the soul on this planet is not one that doesn't come without extreme dangers because it seems that every time you die you lose there's a part of you that's lost and is fractured and so reaching moksha is a very significant and important thing um you know maybe the soul originally i'm just speculating here at this point you know your soul or my soul you know we came here to learn something but if you're stuck here for too long it is that you become so fractured that the ultimate end of that is something that's like a ghost. It's something that's used up. It's something that uh, has lost its energetic potential. And when you interact with humans here, you're interacting with their human form. You're all here what they call human players or human puppets. You're supposed to communicate with true form of existence in another dimension through prayer. 
We're all remote consciousness gathered together in a simulation arena and we're all controlled by remote consciousness. But it is not easy to control this little primitive human player. It's difficult to control it, that's why our lives are so clumsy and so full of awkwardness. This training simulation is difficult for a reason, but it's not easy. So don't get angry that it's all messed up and upside down or that it doesn't work. It's because it is difficult to control it remotely. That's what I was told. That's the nature of this low frequency primitive human form existence. This training ground is a very primitive creation, but don't think of yourself as a human. Think of yourself as a remote entity with long spiritual arms controlling your human player form in this simulation arena. You're not human, you go somewhere else. That's your true existence. This here is just a simulation, training ground for love. I was told that the biggest superpower for humans are their minds. Your imagination has the power of rewriting your brain and changing you and your ability to generate emotions lets you change your surroundings and your environment. You're here for a reason and it's a part of the plan. Humans shouldn't be disrespected for being humans. They're just primitive temporary forms of remote consciousness of a mighty entity from another dimension. And you are already a free being of light. You are already a spirit but your attention is focused on this very on this very local point you have focused your attention on this very local point and this is why you see yourself as an imprisoned one but in fact you are already free I want to explain you one thing, to give you another example, that you are not trapped, you are already free. Look at me, this is you, and this are your vehicle to navigate through the matrix, to interact within this matrix, okay? Your vehicles, friends, are different. This is an advanced vehicle. You may call it a mental body but because it has many abilities that allow you to go through the several realms uh, of, of the astral, of the causal realm. This is a lower body. I would call it astral body. It can go much more faster than this vehicle okay it can go much more faster and easier than this vehicle so i would compare this vehicle to your astral body and this one to your physical body okay and this is your and you are actually beyond this matrix you are much more bigger than it and you cannot experience yourself you cannot experience yourself and to interact as yourself within the matrix unless you have the vehicles okay you are not able to to put the real you into this matrix because you embrace all of it you penetrate every point every corner every pixel, every element of this matrix, it is actually on your palm. How you guys uh, can explore this universe without putting on the vehicle? You have dressed several vehicles actually, and you should put yourself into the state of ignorance. You should shut yourself down. To put on yourself cocoon upon cocoon, okay? To get you encapsulated into one vehicle, then another one, shell upon the shell, okay? So the first thing I want you to notice about this two-dimensional circle is that for me in three dimensions, looking at this two-dimensional plane, I can see the entire circle at one time. I see everything the inside of it, the outside of it, everything, all at once. 
But for somebody living in this two-dimensional world, they don't see a circle, but they see a line. You can see what I mean as I start from above, I can see the entire circle, but as I come onto the plane, that circle shrinks down and gets flatter and flatter and flatter until eventually it just becomes a flat line. So if these two dimensional beings live only on this flat plane, all they see is lines. So what would a sphere look like to this two dimensional person? Well, remember that a two dimensional person can only see a slice through the sphere and they would only see it if it's in their plane. Anything outside of it, they can't see. They only see what's in this plane here. So in order to see this, I would have to move it into the plane. But what it would look like from their point of view, it would look like a circle just suddenly appears and then gets bigger and then smaller and then disappears. And so me as a three-dimensional being moving this 3D object through their two-dimensional plane would seem quite mystical. It would seem like things suddenly appear, then disappear, appear, then disappear. In fact, you would never be able to hide anything in our three-dimensional world from a fourth-dimensional being. Everything would be present at the same time. They'd immediately be able to see what is inside this box. Similar to how I can instantly see what's inside this box, but this two-dimensional person wouldn't be able to see it because it's being blocked by the outside. So it would be quite amazing to see some fourth dimensional thing moving through our three dimensions and making things reappear, change shapes, do all sorts of different things, even making mirror images of things. And this is how it happens. You think that this vehicle is actually you. You identify yourself with these vehicles, with these bodies. By these bodies you can interact with the matrix and to explore yourself uh, from the state of ignorance and you know these bodies are different and they have different abilities so guys i'm asking you to expand your attention from the subjectivity of your vehicle up to the real you which is much more bigger than the matrix so you can smell and taste and know everything at the same time on the different levels on the different densities and dimensions if you want to be really free you should learn to put your attention from the vehicle you have got in this matrix up to the real you which is much more bigger than this matrix okay and by the way guys the ascension to the 5D, second coming, uh, harvest of the souls, all these things have to do with your vehicles, but not the real you. This upgrade, uh, transition, uh, I don't know what else. Your escape, it's like you are breaking your physical vehicle and you think you are allegedly free and you are now in this vehicle and when you drop off this vehicle the astral body you um, you see yourself uh, from the perspective of this mental body and what happens when you die you drop off this vehicle and feel yourself aware of this one and then you can drop on this one and be aware of this one okay but you are still imprisoned because you think you are a vehicle no no you are not a vehicle but you are using this vehicle to interact within this matrix so guys you should expand your awareness from the subjectivity of your vehicle up to the up to the real you to embrace the world as it is